Hey everyone, it's Mr. Kush here today with Propaganda Notes. So get your notebooks and uh, your pencils out because here we go. Going to get them while they're hot. All right, page one. You're going to be taking notes today on propaganda and eventually you're going to look at how its use appears in Animal Farm. Uh, additionally, if you're a Gold Day comm student, you're going to be creating a website and communications using propaganda techniques. So these notes are crucial uh, to that process as well. Again, that's only for the Gold Day uh, students who have communications right now. Also, you're going to be retur uh, returning to these notes as you read through Animal Farm. So you're going to need them and you're going to need them handy. So very first uh, bit here, follow the yellow arrow and write down um, the title of these notes, which is going to be propaganda. Next page. All right. So your first question that you're going to record, again, following this yellow arrow, what is propaganda? Get that written down. Then immediately to the right side of the line, write down the definition for propaganda, which is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Make sure you get both of those down. Next note, set of notes related to propaganda. Again, on the left side of the T, we'd like you to write down uh, this question, how is propaganda used? And then again, following this arrow here, immediately to the right side of the line, write down how propaganda is indeed used. So point one, to create a heavy bias towards one side of a political or social cause or point of view. The second one is to inspire hope and or instill fear into the viewer. The third point is to cause an emotional response in the viewer. And then the fourth way that we have that it's used is by purposefully placing characters, images, colors, and stances to create the desired feeling, action, or reaction in the viewer. So again, make sure you get all of those written down. I have some examples of propaganda for you. Uh, the first um, few are from World War II. Uh, here, you got a picture, um, and this one is, as you can tell, is from Germany. You've got Adolf Hitler riding on the back of a horse. Uh, dressed uh, more or less as a knight in shining armor. So as you can imagine, the Nazi party dressing him as up as such to make him look like a hero, all right? Inspire feelings of admiration or reverence uh, in the German people. Then here you have from England, you've got a picture of, uh, of Hitler being strangled, <laughs> more or less, or choked by a British and uh, a Soviet flag. So here, um, this is getting people to uh, come to grips or push them to the political point of view that, you know, both Great Britain uh, and the Soviet Union working together to uh, defeat the fascists, to defeat the Nazis, to defeat Adolf Hitler. Here's another one from the United States. This is a pretty familiar one. I'm sure you've seen this one. Um, it's Uncle Sam. I want you for the U.S. Army. These were plastered all over the United States uh, leading up to and during World War II to get uh, people to enlist in the armed forces. And then over here, um, this is a, uh, a picture, a piece of propaganda from Russia, from the Soviet Union. And there you can see the Soviet uh, armored tank, cannons, and a soldier, again, uh, in this instance, uh, trying to get um, recruits for the, Soviet, uh, for the Soviet Red Army. Next slide. And I'm not going to play this. Uh, you can look through this on your own. But this actually is a Nazi propaganda film um, from 1938. So uh, take a minute. It's only 55 seconds, um, and you can uh, and you can watch uh, that film. And again, uh, thinking about why are they doing this? What are the feelings that they're trying to inspire? Who are they trying to influence? Okay. So take a, take a gander um, at that. Have another uh, set of, uh, of, of propaganda uh, products, I guess you could say. These are examples of propaganda films from the Cold War. So the Cold War being from 1945 
uh, up until the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, kind of sing signaling uh, the end of uh, communism. And again, very, very brief, very, very brief uh, history lesson. The Cold War, it was that time when predominantly uh, the United States and Western democracies um, were opposed and, and having um, and having huge, huge conflict with um, with the with communist regimes led by then the uh, Soviet Union. Series of wars not fought directly between the United States and the Soviet Union, but proxy wars. Uh, the Korean War was Americans um, and uh, Western democracy versus uh, versus um, forces that were backed by the Soviets or the communists. Uh, same was true um, in Vietnam. Uh, the South Vietnamese backed by Western democracies, uh, the United States, the North Vietnamese uh, backed by um, communist China and also to a degree um, the Soviets. But I digress. But anyway, these are examples of propaganda films uh, from, from the Cold War. The first is Red Dawn, which was um, a, a, fict a fictitious account of, of the United States being uh, invaded by Russian um, and uh, Cuban uh, forces. Um, again, total fiction. Then you've got Rambo. Uh, perhaps you've heard of that, John Rambo. Uh, he was a returning uh, Vietnam vet who went back uh, to Vietnam um, to uh, liberate POWs. Again, this was a total fictitious account. And then probably the one of the more preeminent uh, Cold War films uh, was Rocky IV, where you had Sylvester Stallone, Rocky, and you can kind of see dressed in red, white, and blue trunks fighting against Ivan Drago, um, who was uh, who was a Soviet, uh, the the Russian. Um, and in all of these instances, it was pitting uh, the United States uh, against um, against the Soviets or against communism, one in one uh, one shape or form. Uh, the next one that I have, uh, and this too you can play, there's another piece of, of American Cold War propaganda from 1984. So again, this was um, this was right before the wall the wall came down, uh, when the Cold War was really uh, again at, at a heightened state. The United States and the Soviets not getting along uh, very well, well at all. But it's a recording of Lee Greenwood's Grammy winner, uh, the song "Proud to Be an American." In this case, um, inspiring you know feelings of hope and pride uh, in the United States to you know to get people to rally around uh, our flag and our country and in many ways um, to rally against uh, communism. Last uh, but not least, um, some examples of propaganda from Marvel, and I guess we. Uh, bring this one up just to uh, show you how like pervasive uh, the propaganda is. Again, you know, there's a mix here of both propaganda from the Cold War and from World War II. Here you got Captain America uh, punching out um, a not the Nazis, uh, Adolf Hitler in particular. Here you got Captain America. Um, uh, uh, and it says, uh, see Captain America defy the communist hordes. He's got a... Uh, He's got a communist. You can see the hammer and sickle, which is a sign of the old Soviet Union. Uh, one of their soldiers taking him and throwing him over, you know, throwing him into a heap somewhere. Uh, over here, you've got uh, from Marvel, the Red Skull. Um, the Red Skull uh, originally was a uh, was a, was um, attached to the Nazis. Uh, and then later, and maybe you recognize this from the Avengers, um, but uh, but as a, as members of Hydra and you know Hydra being an offshoot that idea of fascism, uh, Nazis so on and so forth, and then last uh, but not least um, you have um, you have uh, the the diametrically opposed um, Russian version or Soviet version or communist version of of Captain America. Next. Almost there, hang tough. Um, so what we wanna do here, follow the yellow arrow and write down this question, what are some examples of propaganda? And then immediately to the right, um, I'm not gonna tell you what to write down, but what you could do is go ahead, 
look back at a, at a few of the previous slides um, and just make a couple of calls so far as what, what did you think or what did you feel were some of the best examples of, um, of propaganda. And like I said, these are, these are a few, I uh, just wanted to give you, um, give you a few ideas. All right. And then here it is, uh, the very last thing, um, kind of hoping to tie, uh, fallacies and propaganda together. So, um, on the left-hand side, last thing I wanted you to write down was how do fallacies fit um, with propaganda. So where, how do those two mesh? Okay. So then immediately to the right side of the line, we want you to write down this how, okay. And, uh, took my best shot here at giving you just kind of an idea how they work together, but here's the definition. Make sure you get it down in your notes. Fallacies are arguments made by using faulty or mismatched reasoning to prove a point. That is the definition of a fallacy. Okay, by using false reasons to create bias towards a particular political cause or point of view, and by inspiring intense emotions of hope or fear, fallacies or false reasons serve as the quote unquote evidence that grounds propaganda. All right, so in many cases, um, especially when you look at advertisements or images that are purveyed or political speeches, things of that nature that are indeed propaganda at their, uh, one of the tools or one of the ways that they are grounded or the way that the propaganda is pushed is by creating these fallacies, by using false reason uh, to create support for a particular cause or political view. All right, we made it. The last slide. So what you need to do uh, for this assignment, it's twofold, okay? You wanna go to Schoology, you want to make sure that you click on the February 5th folder, go down, click on the discussion box, and then what you want to do is describe in two sentences or less how propaganda works, all right? You're going to want to be brief in doing so. All right, down here, there's a sentence starter. If you want to use that, propaganda works by using blank, blank, or blank to make people feel blank or blank about a particular political belief or point of view. Okay, so get, get your posting down and then don't forget step five. This is the last bit. Take a picture of your propaganda notes and attach it uh, to your discussion post. And the way that you do that, you press your home and your power buttons at the same time to take the screenshot. And then what you want to do is attach the screenshot of your notes uh, to your post. Use that file icon. Uh, the screenshots that you took will be located in your photos app. Um, you click the file icon, it'll, it'll pull those up and make sure that you attach it to your discussion post. So again, your, um, your, your, your sentence or two, how you think propaganda works, kind of sum it all up and then take a screenshot of the notes that you took today. All right. Good luck. Shake your hand out. I know that was a lot of notes and, uh, we'll see you next week.